So we talk a lot about tuning and timing on this channel. And every time we do something timing oriented, there's always a bunch of comments from guys who aren't quite sure exactly what we're talking about, exactly what these various terms mean. So we did one a couple of weeks ago on vacuum advance, and that had to do with like fuel economy and drivability. Uh, but now I want to talk about total advance, because total advance is, if, you wanna, if you're tuning for high performance, total advance is the thing that you're interested in. You don't care about initial, you don't care about vacuum, you care about total. And what total advance is, is how many degrees before top dead center is the spark plug fire. When we time engines in a conventional method, we're doing it backwards. When we time engines at idle from let's say 10 degrees before top dead center, 15 degrees before top dead center, whatever it happens to be. We're doing that, that's exactly backwards of how you want to do it from a high performance standpoint. You don't care what the initial is. The initial is about, um, you know, low speed drivability, uh, it's about emissions, it's about a lot of different things. It's about making the engine, you know, purr like a kitten. It's not about making the thing jump when you hit the throttle. Setting your timing for total, that is. Now, total advance is, and we're not going to talk about vacuum advance. Pretend it doesn't even exist. For our purposes, for true high performance, it, it doesn't exist. It's not there. We can talk about how to add that in in another, another episode. But right now, we're just going to concern, concern ourselves with total. So total is the initial advance, what you drop this distributor in at, at idle. Let's say it's using round numbers, 10 degrees before top dead center. If you've got 20 degrees of centrifugal advance, you'll have a total of 30. Now where that total happens is almost impossible to measure on a standard damper because standard dampers, timing marks and all, are all intended to be run at idle. They're all, they're all intended to be measured from idle. We need to know where the timing mark is at 2500, 3000, 3500 RPM when all of that advances in. So we need to know where it is up there. When the damper is only marked, it only has the single mark for top dead center, and your timing table only goes zero to 10, let's say like right here, this Chrysler, some of them are marked, you know, to, to 15 degrees, some of them are, but we'll use this as an example. Now this is universal, this is gonna apply across the board to every type of engine that you come across. We're just gonna use this as an example and you'll have to adopt it to your own specific deal. So. The way it's marked from the factory is top dead center, right there. Here's your top dead center mark, and here's your zero, and this is where we're going to start from. If, let's say, the, uh, the timing spec for the engine, the idle timing spec for the engine is 10 degrees before top dead center, well, that mark is going to be right there. But now total, you're talking about 30 degrees. So where is 30 degrees? And that's where these marks come in. So now I'm not going to show you these particular marks because sometimes I mark dampers for my own reference and they'll, they'll, these marks and where they are will only make sense to me. But I can use this to illustrate the, the general principle. You need to have a mark on the damper that's indicative of that higher range, 30 degrees, 35 degrees. So what we do is we take a measurement Wait, before I even show you that, I gotta, I gotta explain something because I, I always get questioned on why I do things a certain way, right? And I, I can hear you guys in the comments already. Why don't you use dial back timing light? I stopped using dial back timing lights about 30 years ago when I had one, a name brand one. It, it was inaccurate, it was off by approximately eight degrees and I killed a very expensive engine twice because of that. Uh, after I had discovered that, I started using just a strobe and making my own marks. Uh, and then the other guys, why don't you use timing tape? Because timing tape doesn't stay on forever. Timing tape has a habit of flying off the motor just when you need it the most, right? So I make permanent marks. If you're dealing with an aftermarket damper, like a fluid damper or any of those, those have already got the marks in them. So you can pretty much ignore this part of it. But if you're dealing with a stock damper, you know, you're building just a, you know, your own engine and you're using a stock damper or an aftermarket one isn't available, then this is what you need to know. So what we do, if you look at this timing cover, so here's your distance between zero and 10 degrees. Here's the distance from zero to five. 
So what you want to do is you want to make the measurement from 0 to 10. You want to be as accurate as you can. And then you want to duplicate that mark beginning at 0 on your damper. It's better to show you on this one over here. So here, here's my zero mark, the, the factory's original zero mark, and right now it's lined up with zero. So here's 10, and you can see it lined up exactly with 10. Here's 20, here's 30. Now, in this engine's happy zone, we're, we've got marks at 28, there's our 30, 32, 34, and 36 degrees. So now what's going to happen is when we rev up the engine and all of the advance comes in, our strobe is going to be sh is going to be bouncing off of is going to line up these marks here with the zero instead of these marks, and then you can know what the total timing is. Now, what is the best total timing for your engine? Impossible for me to say because they're all different. There are certain characteristics. Most engines that we commonly use are around a four-inch bore, you know, street strip engines. Um, and generally speaking, between 32 and 36 degrees is where you're going to find, you know, the, the best power. But you're going to have to go out and experiment with that. Find out what works best on your combination. So now if your car is more street than strip and you feel it's necessary to use a vacuum advance, you're going to find that when you set it for total, there's a very good possibility when you plug the vacuum advance in, this thing is going to start to miss and buck and do all kinds of things at a light cruise. And your first inclination is going to be to retard the timing to make up for that. But there are two ways to go about this. Uh, you don't want to retard the timing. You don't want to handicap the engine to make up for the addition of the vacuum advance. What you want to do is make the vacuum advance work for your situation. So some, there are ways to limit the vacuum advance. Some of them actually have an adjustment. There's a, you stick a little Allen, Allen head wrench in the in the uh, the port here, and you can tighten and, and loosen to tailor the advance. Um, you can also fatten the low speed mixture with a low speed enrich fuel enrichment circuit on your carburetor to make up for it. Because what's happening is it's a little bit too lean. The vacuum advance is taking your 32, 34, 36 degrees and turning it to like 48 degrees. So at that point, it's really too lean. If you fatten it up just a little bit, the low, the, 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 the part throttle mixture on your carburetor, that should clear it up. But if it doesn't, you want to consider just eliminating it altogether or fitting it with an adjustable advanced canister. But anyway, that's that. Now one of the side effects of, of one of the benefits of marking your damper this way is that you can actually drop the distributor without using a timing light at all. And you can get it accurate. Let me show you how you do this. Here. Come here. So this is important to know if you're doing a first time fire up with a flat tap at camp. This is like crucial, right? Because you can't, you can't use a timing light to get your first initial start. You're going to have to, you know, set it up so it's going to go. If we've got it marked for our total timing, let's say 32 degrees, 34 degrees, whatever it happens to be, what we would do is rotate the motor until we reach that 30 two degree mark, wherever we want it to be total, okay? We want it to reach that 32 degree mark. Then what you do is you drop the distributor in place, okay? And you, tr you hold the distributor body, turn the rotor hard in the direction of rotation. So in this, this is a big block Chrysler, it rotates counterclockwise. So you want to hold the body, push the distributor or push the rotor hard in the direction of rotation and then move the body itself back and forth until you get a spark. Now you could do this by leaving the coil, you know, leaving the coil wire held close to a ground or you could use a spark indicator. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. But if you hold the rotor hard in the direction of rotation and move the body back and forth, that point where it sparks is exactly what you're going to get on that damper. So doing it this way First click of the key, bam, she's off and running. So I think I covered everything we had to cover with that. Um,
But next time around, I'll talk about actually curving the distributor and, and you know, what the curve is and, and how you want to tailor it to your specific purposes. So I hope you got something out of that. I'll see you tomorrow.